It's important to all of us. So what happens when it no longer smells or tastes like it should? As WDRB's Darby Bean shows us, that's exactly what's happening to some people after recovering from illnesses like COVID-19. I do the almond milk and then the vanilla flavoring because it kind of masks the flavor. Megan Smith has learned a lot over the past year about masking flavors and figuring out what foods she does and doesn't want to keep in the pantry. I love pickled red onions. I think the vinegar is a flavor that I can tolerate. She tested positive for COVID in January of 2021, a mild case that lasted just a few days, but her taste and smell disappeared for about a month. When those senses returned, certain things no longer smelled like they used to to Megan. At work the other day, I walked past the cafeteria and it smells the same as like the dirty linen closet. She says candles, floral scents still smell like they should. Yeah, it smells normal. But eggs, chocolate, meat, now things she can't stand. It's indescribable. Um, I've seen it online as the COVID smell because it isn't like anything I've ever smelled before. Like I said, like it is similar to like a feces, like bodily excretion smell but not quite. And it can be a big, big deal for patients. Dr. Kevin Potts says patients like Megan aren't alone. He describes this as a smell disorder called parosmia, where certain smells are distorted. He says it's caused by damage to nerve fibers in the nose from a head injury, bad sinus conditions, or most commonly, upper respiratory infections. We all know that COVID-19 has been um, a very common source of this condition. Dr. Potts says parosmia was around before the pandemic, but since it began, he has seen a large rise in the number of cases. Some patients find it annoying, others struggling to maintain a healthy diet. Patients that I've seen, they can't tolerate eating because of the smell that's induced by whatever food it is they're eating. Good news, he says, is most patients recover within a few months. But for those like Megan, as a year approaches, she's learning to deal with it the best she can. I've tried to make the majority of my changes through lifestyle changes and finding what I like, what I can tolerate sometimes, and, you know, just taking it day by day. And Darby joins us now with more on this story. So Darby, what was Megan's first sign that this was going on? Well, Chris, the first thing that she noticed was family members were telling her that she was losing a lot of weight, but she wasn't trying to. And she realized she just wasn't eating like she used to because the food didn't smell the same anymore. I can't even imagine what that might yeah. be like, but what is she doing to cope now with this? She actually studied nutrition and health in college, so she's working to try different foods out and find ways to make sure she's getting all the nutrients that she needs. And she has turned to protein powders to help, but says this has also had a mental impact where she's had to put a lot of extra thought into her meals. Now, if you feel like you may be struggling with this same thing, right now we have information on our website at WDRB.com about what Dr. Potts usually suggests for patients. All right, well, we hope this clears up for her soon and wish her the best. Thank you.